Good morning, UA. I'm here with Judy Alley on their back porch, a uh, little sunny afternoon. And uh, I've said this before, but we are getting rid of kind of the hymn history that we have been doing, where we dive into the real intimate histories behind these hymns. And instead, I want to know your histories with these hymns. So it's not your favorite hymn, it's just a hymn that has come to you at a very uh, particular time, and it might just be something that you hold uh, a little bit closer to your heart. So uh, I want to start off thanking Judy for taking a little time to talk with us. And uh, I'm not going to talk a ton. Uh, I have trouble interrupting sometimes, but uh, just ignore me. <laughs> and uh, the first thing I want to ask, though, is just one, um, letting people know about your history with hymns. You know, did you grow up in the church? Uh, what brought you uh, to hymns and a love of hymns? So I guess I would just start by saying I grew up in the Church of Christ and um, music has always been a part of my life, just kind of hardwired into me. And I heard it in church. I heard it in my home. I heard it on the radio. I thought I was going to be a country star when I grew up and <laughs> um, be at the Grand Old Opry, but we can see that's not where I am today. <laughs> but that's okay. Um, when I was younger, I had really fond memories of looking up at my parents in church to hear if they were singing and what their voices sounded like when they were singing. That was really sweet to me. I wanted to remember that always. Um, and I also remember sitting in my home in my doorway after bedtime hours had come and sneakily listening to my parents. Um, my dad was a, a youth leader in our church back then in Fort Worth, and the young adults in their uh, marriages and singleness would come over and hang out with my parents always. That, that was the hub, and they would sit around with their guitars and mandolins and banjos or whatever, and harmonize, and I was totally captivated, and I would sit up for as long as they would play. Um, I don't know that I ever fell asleep in the doorway of my room, but mm -hmm. um, I just was totally drawn into the harmony of their voices wow. and the blending, um, and how to me in that moment, as a very young child, I felt like that was such a God gift, mm -hmm. like it was something totally that wasn't everybody and um, that it was meant for a purpose. And, yeah. um, it just, it really drew me into, to really having a desire for learning more music. And yeah. How could you not be drawn to someone playing a banjo? Yeah, <laughs> no, that's true, ben. banjo. <laughs> well, and also, like, we talked a little bit about this before, but um, so many of these hymns have these folk music roots. And I love that I said that I think of Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? and kind of them honoring that, but both of us having grown up in that kind of situation. That was for me, loving hymns came through hearing my family sing mm -hmm. uh, and make music, and that's what was passed down to me. And that's kind of a common thread. And for you now, uh, with your family being very musical, uh, I mean, that was a huge blessing to me. Whenever I, whenever I got to UA was, oh, some more musicians, let's talk, let's sing together. Um, but yeah, I love that about, about your story. Well, I spent a lot of time on my grandparents' farm in uh, middle school and elementary, um, even early high school. And the times that I spent out there uh, were only 20 minutes from my home, from Fort Worth to Mansfield. And it was night and day. Like I left judgment and I left uh, persecution from siblings or a lack of friends or feeling like I'm a disappointment to my parents in certain ways, just normal mm -hmm. childhood things, but yeah. they weighed heavily on me. And I just remember the complete opposite experience when I would go out to my grandparents and have this quiet nature setting um, where I was encouraged to be creative and to think and just to be still. Mm -hmm. And um, I found it was a very safe and simple place, and that mm -hmm. was very nourishing to me. Mm -hmm. um, and so I really cherish those times and those memories, and I feel like in my own mind that there, it was more time, actual hours and days and weeks than it might have been mm -hmm. because I latched onto it so strongly. Oh, yeah. um, 
but uh, my granny is one of my favorite people. And after Walker was born, she died, so our middle son, and Darren uh, was asked by my parents to do a funeral for my grandmother. And it was a graveside service under a tent, and it was pouring rain, and so Darren was, you know, really under the gun. I think he felt himself to do uh, justice to my grandmother's memory and, yeah. and honor her uh, in a way that would be pleasing to my mom. Mm -hmm. And uh, he did a wonderful job, brought out her character and her strength and this funny stories, and we all laughed and cried. And uh, there was only one song that my mother had requested. Our friends that I would sit up and listen to in my doorway as a child, that group of men um, asked them to sing The Unclouded Day. And so here we are under a tent in pouring rain and it's a clouded day. Yeah. And we're singing The Unclouded Day because in that moment I realized my mother, my grandmother was in that unclouded place. Mm -hmm. And it was a, a beautiful source of um, strength and comfort for me. And that, that song will always resonate with me in that way. Mm. Um, so it just gives me hope uh, for the future, something to look forward to, something to hang on to when all of life's struggles are, are going on. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I love this one. The, the harmony, you know, I always talk about hymns that have that tenor part. It's written by all these tenors, so they give tenors the best part. And this is one of those ones that you can just hear a group of guys sitting around playing mandolin and guitar mm -hmm. and banjo, singing that kind of twang to it. Uh, we talked a little bit about this beforehand, and I was saying Jenna will, will laugh at me because when I've been singing one of these songs, uh, she knows because my southern draw starts coming out. She goes, Ben, what have you been singing? <laughs> <laughs> and I got that little southern draw to it. Um, but this is such a beautiful hymn. It's, uh, it's also... So I've heard it known as um, Oh They Tell Me of a Home mm -hmm. uh, or Uncle Out of Day. This is done by so many, uh, so many of these country artists I love. Yeah, like, a lot of them have flipped the unclouded day to the uncloudy day. Oh, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Jenna and I were talking about that. Like Doc Watson, he, yeah. he flipped it that way. Billy Strings, uh, Flatten Scruggs. Because <laughs> I would also listen to all those on these, on these vinyls, too. We talked about that mm -hmm. uh, where you would listen to it there. Um, so, with this hymn, you know, you've given us this context of, of where you first heard it with uh, these men singing and, and listening to that, and then it being so tied with uh, that group uh, with your grandma. Uh, then with it, what, what do you want other people to see in this hymn uh, when they're singing it? Because there's so many different places people come from, uh, and you have a unique perspective with it. You know, there are so many things you could say. Um, one of which is just connecting and cherishing family members and memories to a time when you've heard something and how that resonates with you and how it mm -hmm. helps you from losing the memory of them. It can stir up mm -hmm. memories again when you hear that song and uh, recall things that you felt were lost mm -hmm. um, and knowing that they're always there and, and watching over you. Um, and we talked a little bit about the lyrics yeah. and how often we don't connect with all the senses through music. Mm -hmm. And so the, the second verse where it talks about um, where the tree of life in eternal uh, bloom sheds its fragrance, through the unclouded day, yeah. um, immediately that brought up the smells of gardenia and honeysuckle and magnolia and mm -hmm. all of the favorite smells I have mm -hmm. of things that bloom and how sweet that is. And I can't imagine how much sweeter being in the presence of God will mm -hmm. be. Yeah, cool, because I didn't realize that we had grown up kind of in the same area. I'm from Cleburne, and you were talking about this Mansfield area. And that's what, when we started talking about it, I was just so drawn into it because exactly like you said, we think about, you know, auditory and, you know, if you want to visualize something when you're singing uh, or even physical with just physically singing, uh, but you don't think about smells a lot. And when you start talking about fragrance, 
uh, and honeysuckles. You know, I grew up in this country area where I remember going down and picking honeysuckles and, you know, tasting them yeah. and dogwood uh, tree and all these different beautiful. And we're starting to get that now as we're, we're getting into uh, some of the flowers blooming. Uh, and the sun coming up. We've had our own few un uncloudy days here, <laughs> or cloudy days recently, and so yes. finally the sun's peeking out, <laughs> and so it's a beautiful time to even be able to talk about it. Um, so is that your favorite lyric in it, or is there any other specific thing? Well, I loved what it made me stop and think, and, and you do this all the time, and I think it's a very helpful tool, is that we sing these songs in worship or on the radio or... Um, together whenever but we don't always slow down and really pick apart the lyrics like we can see it know it for what it means in the sentence but to mm -hmm. experience the lyrics to actually dive into those senses um, really can draw a lot more from the meaning of the lyrics than just reading through them like a storybook where you hear it you know it okay move on um, the other thing is, is that the no tears, I'm a very emotional, <laughs> I'm a, clouds and rain are synonymous with tears and mm -hmm. I'm a very emotional being and mm -hmm. I've struggled with that my entire life. We're both type fours yeah. on the Enneagram, <laughs> we know, but. Try at the drop of a hat, yep. And that has been a source of contention between family members and friends mm -hmm. when I can't keep it together. Um, in different ways, not just crying, but um, I'm so looking forward to the day where I can lay all those emotions that I feel like are negative down and maybe the, the tears will only be for joy mm -hmm. um, if there are tears, which is kind of hard for me to imagine heaven right with no tears mm -hmm. um, just because we do experience tears of joy. Yeah. and. That's interesting to me. Mm -hmm. We've talked about uh, about that too, where it's trying to process like the what emotions do I are good and which ones do I process through, and yep. how I said like that's another thing that I love about these hymns is how grounding they are. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, I shared this, but I, whenever I'm having a particularly bad morning or whatever it is or afternoon or hard day at work the best thing for me almost always is to just sit and play a couple of hymns and sing through that and my, mm -hmm. my I, I inevitably just like level out a little bit and there's something there's something um, very deep and, and beautiful that singing does mm -hmm. and especially whenever it ties to family and it is these emotional things you can't think through family and not process sometimes really heavy emotions yep. and so to have a hymn that is not only helping like to process this but is so connected to this moment in time mm -hmm. and it's so forward-looking to uh, about this uh, this moment to look forward to um, that is just like laying it down and real rest um, with those people that you love. And I, I kind of love the picture of even getting up there and those same guys are sitting in a circle with banjos oh. and mandolins still singing about. You're going to meet him one day. I'm going to introduce <laughs> you to him, Ben. All right, dibs you on the You will banjo. love him. <laughs> Charles and Johnny. Yeah, well, I'll bring my and friends. James. So, yeah. And they'll bring their friends and we can talk. <laughs> um, man, I'm, I'm so appreciative of, of you just taking a little bit of time to talk okay. about this. Uh, and this hymn, uh, I know so many people know this hymn and maybe have some different memories with it. And so to hear your perspective mm -hmm. uh, and some of this, the stories and your thoughts behind it, uh, I'm just so appreciative of it. Uh, okay. Yeah, I hope it's, it's my a pleasure. blessing to y'all. And um, I'm going to talk a little bit about it after this and just play it a little bit. I'm going to use a banjo because how can you not? How can you not? <laughs> uh, but again, thank you, Judy. Uh, appreciate it. You bet. Thank you. I want to thank Judy Alley again for sharing uh, her history with this song and some of her story with us. I hope that was a blessing to you as well. Uh, the story behind this hymn, it's relatively small. You have Josiah Alwood in about 
86 is coming home from Ohio to Michigan and he sees a big rainbow spreading across a giant uh, black nimbus cloud that covered, he said, 40% of the sky. And he was just completely drawn to it, said he'd never seen anything like it, and uh, just stuck in his mind and woke up and started riding. Next thing you know, you have an uh, unclouded day. And it ended up spreading ever since. Uh, beautiful hymn, love this song. And so here it is if you haven't heard it. Tell me of a home far beyond the skies Oh, they tell me of a home far away Oh, they tell me of a home where no storm clouds rise Oh, they tell me of an unclouded day Oh, the land of cloudless day Oh, the land of an unclouded sky they tell me of a home where no storm clouds rise. Oh, they tell me of an unclouded day. Oh, they tell me of a home where my friends have gone. Oh, they tell me of that land far away where the tree of life in eternal bloom sheds its fragrance through an unclouded day. Tell me of a home where no storm clouds rise. Oh, they tell me of a love cloud day. Oh, they tell me that he smiles on his children there. And his smile drives their sorrows away. And they tell me that no tears ever come again. In that lovely land of unclouded day. Again, may this be a prayer for you this week. Spend some time with it and uh, reach out to me if you have a song that you love that you want to share and story with it. Uh, Y'all have a blessed week. Bye.